Welcome to AdTran University Show Me video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a PRI. Before we can troubleshoot a PRI, it's very important to know and understand the messages that are going between the user agent, which is the AdTran, and the SIP server, which are the SIP messages, and then the PRI messages, which is between the AdTran and the customer's ISDN PBX. So this is a great reference to, to go back and look at when you are receiving messages, when we're sending messages, and you're not receiving something back, this is a good place to to reference um, to see which messages we're supposed to be receiving and which we're not. So the first thing that you want to do is typically troubleshooting. You want to start with the physical layer and work your way up. So we just want to verify first is the PRI up, and we do that by looking at the T1. So we do a show interface T1 zero slash three. So my PRI is on the third interface. I can see that it's up. I can see that I'm using all 24 channels of my T1 and it's nailed up. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to verify that the PRI is up. So you can do a show interface PRI 1. Here we can see that the PRI is up. Um, we can view that the D channel is active. You always want to make sure this D channel is active. If not, you're not going to be able to place calls. A lot of times the D channel could be down because of some of your configurations. Um, but the T1, you want that to be up. If that's not up, check your physical connection, your configuration. Make sure that your PRI and your T1s are, are no shut. You want to make sure that they're uh, configured properly. So if you do a show run interface T1 0 slash 3, here's very simple. You got your TDM group and then your interface is not shut. And if I do a show interface PRI1, um, show run interface PRI1, you can see here that I'm cross connecting and I just do a no shut there. So this is just your basic configuration. Once you get, once you verify that your T1 is up and your PRI is up, the next thing that you want to do is uh, initiate some debug commands. So there's two primary debug commands that you want to use. Debug, SIP, stack, messages then you're going to do a debug isdn l2 dash question mark and then we're just going to do formatted and then another one you can do is debug voice you can do a verbose if you want a lot of details in this example i'm just going to do a debug voice summary so if i do a show debug we can see it here i'm just going to save my debug now by doing a debug save all right, and at this point, I'm going to place an inbound call, and then we're going to kind of go through some of this uh, messaging here. So I'm now placing an inbound call. Call's coming in. I'm just hitting enter while my phone's ringing. I'm going to answer it. And then now I'm going to hang up. All right, so once you've done that, I'm going to turn off my debug now. And then I'm just going to quickly scroll up here. So here's my messages coming in. So here's my invite. So it's an inbound, so I'm receiving it. Here's my information uh, with the from fields. This is the caller um, ID, which is the Annie, and the DNS, which is the call number, is who the invite is or the request URI, which is that phone number. Then we're going to look at the two. So if you guys remember from that chart, when we receive an invite, we're going to transmit 100 trying back. And if you remember from that chart, so here is the voice summer says, okay, hey, I'm calling this 440 number. So now this T means that I'm transmitting. So I'm transmitting this SAPI message, uh, ISDN message to um, the PBX. So if you look at this, I have placed the uh, call number, which is right here. I looked at the call in number, which is the from field of set message, and I populated it in here. And this here is identifying the message, which is a setup message. So M5 is a setup message. That's what we are transmitting. Then we receive a MO2 call in process, letting us know. We can see here that we are grabbing um, uh, the 21st uh, channel uh, of this uh, PRI um, located here. So here is channel uh, 21 that's being used, which is also identified uh, right here. Then uh, when we receive the call processing, we then receive an alerting. The alerting means, okay, uh, the phone is ringing. So we receive an M1 alerting. When we receive that, what we do is we transmit back to the soft switch a 180 ringing. So we're letting the soft switch know, hey, this phone is ringing. And remember, I hit the enter key while the phone is ringing. When the phone answers, we receive, that's what the R is for, we receive a connect, meaning he's picking up. 
Then we transmit back a M connect ACK. Then at that point, we transmit a 200 OK back to the saw switch. And then he receives a, an ACK. And at that point, the RTP is now traversing between us and the saw switch. Um, and uh, we are now connected. In this example here, um, I ended the call. So I know who ended the call. The, the customer in the PSTN behind the saw switch ended the call because I'm receiving a SIP message. So I received a buy. I transmit a 200K back to that. And then I transmit a disconnect message back to the customer's PBX. If the PBX person would have hung up, then I would have received a disconnect from that. And then I would have transmitted a buy back to the saw switch. So these are kind of messaging that you want to get. So it's important to know that when we transmit certain messages, what we're supposed to receive back. So for example, if we're sitting there transmitting setup message and we never get back a call procedure, then you know that something's going on at the PBX. Or uh, so that and that's a, for an inbound example. For an outbound example, if we receive a setup message and we're transmitting an invite to the soft switch and never receive back kind of trying, then something's going on a soft switch. Um, but real quickly, um, I'm just going to do a simple outbound call so you guys can just have that and then we'll finish the, the call. So in this example, I'm just going to place an outbound call. So let's just turn our debug on, which is a debug restore. So I have my debug running right now and now let's go ahead and place an outbound call. All right, so the call is ringing and I'm going to answer it. And I've answered the phone and then now I simply hang up and the calls hang up. So I'm going to turn the debug off. All right, so now we've placed the call. So let's just scroll up to where the call came in. And here's the call coming in. So we know that it's an outbound call because we're receiving a setup message from the PBX. All right, and then we transmit a call proceeding, and then we transmit an invite here to the soft switch. Um, so one thing to look at here also is um, the call number. Uh, which is the number that we're calling, that gets put into the request URI or the SIP invite here. So this is the number should match the called party. And then the call in party, which is the 440, is the Annie who's placing the call. And that gets put in the from field. Um, there will be another video that you can search on on um, modifying the outbound caller ID video. And we'll go over how you can manipulate this in, in different situations. But in this example, we just take it from uh, the customer PBX. But we can change that if we need to in the SIP invite. Um, but we'll, we'll go over that in another video. And you can watch that one if you need to uh, in the support forms. Then we get 100 trying back. 180 ringing from the saw switch. Here we're receiving these from the saw switch with the RX. Once we get that, we then transmit to the PBX and alerting. So at this little enter space right here, the or the far end party, uh, sorry, is answering it out in the PSTN. Uh, they answer it. It sends back a 200 OK. And then we transmit a connect. And at that point, uh, the call is up. And then we know that the PBX hung up this time because we received a disconnect. And then we transmit a buy to the saw switch, and then the call is erased. All right, so hopefully uh, this is helpful, giving you a good starting point in troubleshooting. Um, again, uh, if you're uh, if you have a problem and this doesn't fix, you still have some questions. What I recommend is just opening up a, a post in the support forms um, based upon which product you're using, and just enter the following uh, debug commands. But this is what uh, we're going to need to properly troubleshoot it. Do a debug SIP stack messages. Do a debug SIP stack CLDU, that's call leg distribution unit. That helps gives us a little bit deeper of a debug. Debug SIP CLDU, sorry. Um, then um, the next one is a debug voice verbose. That gives us all of the behind the scenes of the switchboard and decision logic. And then the last one is for the PRI, ISDN, L2 formatted. And then those. So these are the commands. Um, it is uh, four commands debug SIP stack messages, debug SIP CLDU, debug voice verbose, and then debug ISDN format. So get those and then capture what your problem is, and then you can post that in support forms. Hopefully, this video was helpful to you, and look forward to more Adtran University Show Me video series. Thanks, and have a great day.